Hi, this is Kriya with Game Domain. Gran Turismo is a 1997 racing game released for the PlayStation. With a focus on the physics of driving to the point that it bordered on simulation, realistic car customization, and high-fidelity representation of licensed vehicles, it was obviously developed by car aficionados for car aficionados. Despite having a niche audience, Gran Turismo is the PlayStation's most successful franchise, boasting millions of units sold and claiming solid review scores from critics. Even after 20 years, the Gran Turismo series is standing strong. But how did a niche racing game for gearheads become a PlayStation flagship title? Before we get into this documentary, let me just start off by saying this video is a remastered version of our 2017 Gran Turismo documentary. We've made tweaks to the script to include a few more details and have completely changed the editing and voiceover. The story of Gran Turismo is the story of Kazunori Yamauchi. Yamauchi has been fascinated by cars since he was 3. When he was 24, he bought a Nissan GTR. Six months later, he crashed it while driving over 120 miles per hour. Yamauchi knew and understood the principles underlying car racing. So he pitched a project to Sony. A racing game that used real physics to let players experience racing the way professional racers around the world did. Most games up to that point used polygonal boxes with set speeds and performance. Yamauchi wanted to calculate the physics from the torque of the engine to the friction of each wheel's contact patch. Sony declined. Instead, Yamauchi paid his dues, making Motor Tune Grand Prix 1 and 2. Both games were solid racing games that, despite their colorful animated aesthetic, laid the groundwork for his vision. More importantly, the Motor Tune series was successful enough that when Yamauchi again pitched his dream game, he was approved. GT1, 1997-1998 Yamauchi's team of about 12 people spent the next 5 years creating Gran Turismo, while Yamauchi actually went to a racing driving school to learn the ins and outs of racing for the game. They licensed over a hundred vehicles from car makers like Nissan, Dodge, and Aston Martin. Each car was created in the game based on data from extensive photography, realistic sound recording from actual cars, and physical model kits. Not content to reproduce cars as they were made from the factory line, the Gran Turismo team added customization that went beyond the generic upgrade system. Suspension, air system, and brake upgrades, just to name a few, allowed players to change out parts on their virtual cars the same way they could in a garage. That care and dedication showed. Gran Turismo easily caught up with competitors of the time, many of which only had a few dozen generic vehicles on offer. The craftsmanship and attention to detail exposed millions to the breadth and depth of car racing for the first time and made Gran Turismo the most successful game for the original PlayStation. GT2 1999 After the release of Gran Turismo, the development team was spun out from Sony Digital Entertainment and became Polyphony Digital. While they were more independent, they were still under pressure to create a sequel in time for Christmas 1999. Gran Turismo 2 made that deadline in Japan and North America, but the time pressures showed. Bugs corrupted save games, which meant that hard-earned cars could vanish from a player's garage. For completionists, only 98.2% of the game could be completed. While mechanical damage had been implemented, it lacked the ultra-realistic collisions and physical damage players were clamoring for. The care and craft was still there though. Given the choice to cut from the game of Gran Turismo or the experience, Polyphony had chosen to keep the experience. The number of cars on the roster was four times that of its predecessor, and each one received the individual attention to handling and modeling used for the first installment. The physics were upgraded and integrated the mechanical damage with the customization options. Gran Turismo 3, A-Spec Gran Turismo 2's graphics were another sticking point for some. They were comparable to the first, even though the number of vehicle models ballooned. For Gran Turismo 3, A-Spec, the PlayStation 2 provided additional power and allowed Polyphony to improve the look of the game and the fidelity of the car models. Between the move to a new system and the focus on graphical upgrades though, elements of Gran Turismo 2 like the mechanical damage, the hundreds of additional cars, and some customization options were removed. The number of vehicles crept back down to a number closer to that offered by the original Gran Turismo. Even with those compromises, the game ran critically behind schedule as Yamauchi fought hard to avoid the bugs in Gran Turismo 2. 
These delays pushed it back to a 2001 release date, forcing Sony to rename what had been triumphantly announced as Gran Turismo 2000. What Gran Turismo 3 kept from the previous installment was the arcade mode. The vision of Gran Turismo was connecting players to the feel of professional driving, embodied in the tagline, The Real Driving Simulator. That included developing the skills of a professional driver. The first Gran Turismo led players to develop those skills with licensed races and a limited stable of modestly performing cars. Licenses led to races, which in turn led to money and better cars. While the license system bordered on grinding, it was a hardcore video game that demanded much from its players. Arcade mode made more cars available from the start, allowed players to unlock additional cars through varied arcade play, and, in some versions, boasted its own ending. Arcade mode was an olive branch to more casual gamers and a marketing move that broadened the game's appeal. Despite all of these challenges, A-Spec was the most successful installment of the series. The series' constant sales and critical acclaim showed that gamers appreciated the depth and knowledge usually reserved for car aficionados and the sometimes unforgiving challenge of racing based on real-world physics. Then came Gran Turismo Concept 2002 Tokyo Geneva, a GT game that was completely unreleased in North American markets, being exclusive to Japan, Southeast Asia, Europe, and Korea. Not much can be said about this game, except it bridged the gap between GT3 and GT4. GT4 2004 GT3 set a high bar and polyphony and Yamauchi strove to meet it in the next installment. In 2004, it had taken three of the franchise's seven years of history to make Gran Turismo 4. It further immersed players by rendering the pitching, downforce, and weighing down of cars during races. That small graphical change helped players see the effects of physics on their cars where real racers can feel them. Instead of relying on a traditional tutorial, Gran Turismo 4 packed in a manual on the physics of real racing. It also featured the expected expansion of available cars and trucks and well-executed graphical upgrades, including the ability to render those upgrades in 1080i. Despite cancelled plans to include online play, Gran Turismo was continuing the focus on the experience of driving. More than any of its competitors, it crafted a way for gamers who'd never expect to even touch these vehicles to feel what was like to control them. Little did anyone suspect the plans Polyphony had for this vision. The three-year gap between GT4 and its predecessor was a sign of things to come. The Polyphony team and Yamauchi had accumulated enough clout to dictate terms on the next installment, including the timetable for its release. It would be another six years before gamers could buy the next Gran Turismo title. Interregnum The franchise wouldn't rest on its laurels though. In 2006, a Nissan promotional event put Gran Turismo players behind the wheel of actual race cars. The Nissan personnel present were impressed with the gamers' potentials and Sony, Nissan, and Polyphony began discussions. A few years later, they would announce something most gamers would have only dreamed of, Gran Turismo Academy. It was a reality television show made to find exceptional Gran Turismo players from around the world and give them the opportunity to become actual race car drivers. Potential racers were put through four phases of screening, physical and psychological evaluations, and real racing challenges. At the end, one of them would become part of Nissan's driver development program. Lucas Ordonez completed all of GT Academy's trials to become its first champion and would go on to earn second at Le Mans a few years later, showing that the skills imparted by GT were applicable to the real world. Polyphony also announced Gran Turismo HD. Scheduled for a 2007 release date, it would have kept the series on a regular release schedule. Envisioned as a bare-bones promise of the next installment's abilities on the PlayStation 3, GT HD's content would be available at a below retail price with content being provided by online play and downloadable content. In 2006, after releasing a free teaser in the form of Gran Turismo HD concept, Kazunori Yamauchi would confirm the cancellation of the main title so that Polyphony could focus on Gran Turismo 5. Just as Gran Turismo kept working, so too did its competitors. Microsoft and Turn 10 Studios launched the Forza series in 2005, answering Gran Turismo's PlayStation-only success with an Xbox exclusive. Forza featured realistic physics like Gran Turismo, but integrated car damage, online play, and more driver assets into its design. While Gran Turismo insisted on honing skills by having players work for progression, 
Forza pushed the video game side of the racing game genre. There were also a number of imitators, R Racing, Project Gotham, etc. So then came GT5 Prologue, a sample game for Gran Turismo 5, with new introductions such as the capability of racing with 16 cars at once, improved AI, and a realistic view from inside the car, which has been seen in many racing games after it. It was also the first Gran Turismo game to include online racing, something never before seen in a Gran Turismo game. There is also a new interface allowing the player to have a hub to see the currently selected car in a realistic looking environment, and allowed them to turn the camera 360 degrees to admire their car. The game got frequent free updates including new cars, game modes, or videos to be obtained. GT5 Prologue also brought the very first fully licensed Formula 1 car, the F2007, which was a big deal for the Gran Turismo franchise. The game was revealed in North America at the Specialty Equipment Marketing Association's, or SEMA's, show at Sony's booth. GT5 Prologue got good reviews and earned its spot in the Gran Turismo franchise. With its online racing introduction, this game was a giant stepping stone for the Gran Turismo series. Later came Gran Turismo, a port for the PSP, also known as Gran Turismo Portable. The game had great graphics and is one of the best-selling games on the PSP released. The game had open-ended design and gave the player three different things that they could control. The player could change the mode, drift trial, time trial, and single race, the map, and the car. They could select from 1 to 99 laps and 833 vehicles, and got rewards such as cars and credits based on the difficulty of the races. This game also had something completely new, music tracks. You could select different soundtracks for races, however, the player had to unlock this feature by completing section B or C of the driving challenges. At E3, Polyphony revealed that the tracks for the game had been directly sourced from GT4, and the physics engine was based on GT5 Prologue. The biggest challenge for the game's development was trying to fit the game on such small software. Nonetheless, the game was completed, and the reviews were mixed. The critics found the overall gameplay as great as ever, but were disappointed at the lack of career mode and car upgrading. Commercially, though, the game was massively successful, selling 2.22 million copies in its first year. Overall, this game was another great addition to the ever-growing Gran Turismo franchise. GT5 2010 Despite the growth of competitors and stopgap measures like GTHD Concept, pressure grew to release Gran Turismo 5. The PlayStation 3 had been out for years and it still lacked a proper installment for one of its most anticipated games. However, when Gran Turismo 5 was finally released in 2010, Polyphony delivered on its promises. Online play, external car damage, dashboard views, enhanced physics, and thousands of cars. Notable drivers like Jeremy Clarkson, Dennis Malavagni, David Coulthard favorably compared Gran Turismo 5 to the experience of driving real cars on real tracks. Despite the previous outcry and persistent complaints about the AI and collision physics, all was forgiven. The attention to detail and knowledge of each car was still there, and those factors would make Gran Turismo 5 the highest selling PlayStation exclusive for the console. Not to mention the fact that a car took 6 months for one person to fully model, compared to the one day of GT1. Yamauchi still wasn't satisfied. While he thought of the PlayStation 3 as a larger vessel, he still wanted to polish Gran Turismo into an experience that was yet more clean and beautiful. GT6 2013 Part of that experience was providing something players had never seen before. For years, auto manufacturers had credited Gran Turismo with introducing gamers and car aficionados from around the world to vehicles they would never have seen before. The Vision Gran Turismo program recognized that and sought to help car makers and Polyphony work closer together. While that kind of cooperation would seem like advertising in any other series, Gran Turismo has always been about the cars. The series had been designed to showcase good cars honestly, and most automakers were eager to have their best included in a game played by millions of gamers. What Vision Gran Turismo did was allow over a dozen car companies to submit concept cars for Gran Turismo 6. Gamers were allowed to play cars that, with a few exceptions, were designed with cutting-edge modern-day technology, but were too prohibitively cost-expensive to produce. They featured a novel approach to aesthetics and the science of driving which could only be executed and experienced in a simulation like Gran Turismo. 
2013's Gran Turismo 6 wasn't solely based around the Vision program. It kept its edge by offering over a thousand cars in 37 locations with dozens of layouts. The introduction of variable weather and environmental changes gave it endurance while players worked their way up the ranks of licensed games. Downloadable content helped out more casual players who didn't have the time for skills to master its nuances. While controversial, it opened up a usually closed and demanding experience. This versatility and imagination backed up the Polyphony team's solid backbone of immersive game design. Photorealistic courses, sounds pulled directly from real cars they represent, and performance and customization familiar to players who know cars were the bedrock on which these innovations were based, and as well, this was the year that Yamauchi had a street named after him in honor of all he had done for the world. GT Sport 2017 This game was released the year of the 20th anniversary of Gran Turismo, and people were excited. The Vision program was continued for Gran Turismo Sport when it was released back in October, and it has continued to be a success. The seventh game of the Gran Turismo series, GT Sport of course, has greatly improved graphics and even had a VR tour mode that made the game compatible with the PlayStation VR headset, changing the way you played. This game was quite different from its predecessors, with online racing in only two modes, Sport Mode and Arcade Mode. Unlike GT5 and 6, this game unusually has no day or night cycle or dynamic weather system, but makes up for it with its unique ways of playing and being quite different in that it still receives updates. It was massively successful, getting a 90% score on Google's review page and hit number 5 on the sales charts in the United States. All in all, Gran Turismo Sport is a fresh look at Gran Turismo and will probably hold up until the next game triumphantly drifts into stores. This has been our updated look at the Gran Turismo series and the impact it made on PlayStation, gaming, and the world itself. We hope you enjoyed this update to one of our most popular videos from over two years ago now. And if you did enjoy, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and join our Discord. This has been Creo with Game Domain.